Unquestionably, the UH-1 Iroquois has a decisive role in the acceptance of the utility helicopters all over the world. It has led to an important transformation in the military concepts. The UH-1 is not only a warrior, but also an important symbol in the culture of the modern world. Especially with its use in the Vietnam War, it became an icon of the first Cold War and a popular actor of Hollywood. Now we're investigating the UH-1, a true helicopter legend. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. Indeed, the UH-1 is an important icon that has left its mark in the last 50 years militarily and culturally. When you remember the Vietnam War in the past, in the movie Apocalypse Now, the flying UH-1s come to mind while Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries play in the background. In a future apocalyptic scenario, the wreck of this helicopter is probably among what you'll see at the junkyard. Before talking about the UH-1, let's look at the brief history of the helicopter. The first successful flight trial with a helicopter is dated 1907. However, it took almost 30 years to see the FW-61, the first operational rotorcraft in the sky. During the Second World War, the first real steps were taken towards the military use of helicopters. Although at that time, the military planners had seen that the helicopter would be an important system, there were many problems yet to be solved. The helicopters were very unreliable mechanically. Their constant need for excessive maintenance was a big problem. Also, it was not possible to design an efficient helicopter with the aerodynamic knowledge of the time. However, the Korean War paved the way for more investment in this field. Because of the inadequate roads of the mountainous Korean peninsula, the tracks couldn't be used efficiently. This revealed the need for the helicopter. During the Korean War, on September 13, 1951, the US Marine Corps used the helicopters to supply its battalion with 8,550 kilograms of supplies and evacuate 74 wounded troops. This was the first military helicopter airlift and sling load mission. After the Korean War, France used helicopters intensively and effectively in Algeria. Another important example was the successful use of helicopters in the 1956 invasion of the Suez Canal area by British and French troops. Having studied these examples in detail, the US Army introduced the Air Mobility Doctrine in the mid-1950s. We should note that originally defined as Air Mobility, the doctrine would later become Air Assault. Today, Air mobility concept is used for transportation to an area in the vicinity of combat, while air assault concept means the helicopters are used for directly combat missions. If we continue after this little note, in the mid-1950s, the US Army decided to reorganize the 7th Cavalry Regiment of the 1st Cavalry Division as an Air Cavalry Regiment. The effective execution of the new doctrine required the development of a higher performance helicopter than those in use at that time. Therefore, the US Army initiated a tender for a new rotorcraft defined as utility helicopter, and in 1955, Bell won the tender with its Model 204. The Model 204 made its first flight on October 20, 1956. The helicopter was named as HU-1 Iraqua by the US Army. The abbreviation HU was referring to the initials of helicopter utility. However, pilots had the tradition of giving a nickname to aircraft. They read the number 1 as the letter I and pronounced as Huey. The designation of HU-1 was later changed as UH-1. The helicopter had a metal fuselage with two rotor and tubular landing skids. Thanks to the two-bladed system, the UH-1 needed a small storage space, but it caused high vibration. Besides the vibration, the passenger seats of the helicopter were not comfortable as well. These seats were constructed of aluminum tube frames with canvas material. However, 
thanks to the simple structure, the cargo compartment could be quickly reconfigured. The first serial production model, called UH-1A, had a 641 kW Lycoming T53L1A turboshaft engine. This version was introduced in 1959 as the replacement of the piston engined H19, H13 and CH34s. The UH-1B was equipped with a 716 kW T53L5 engine and became operational in 1961. One year later, the US Marine Corps also became the user of this model. But there were some differences. The major changes included the use of corrosion-resistant all-aluminum construction and radios compatible with the US Marine Corps ground frequencies. This model had also rotor brake used to stop the rotor quickly. After the changes, the helicopter was designated as UH-1E. The C model had a new rotor system made of aluminum and laminate which allow higher speeds and reduce the blade stall. The improved rotor also provided better maneuverability. It was equipped with an 820 kW T53L11 engine. The tail boom of the UH-1C was also changed. This model was intended strictly for the gunship role. The Model 205 of Bell made its first flight in 1963. Also called as the UH-1D, this version had stretched fuselage and larger rotor blades. It had the same turboshaft engine of the C model. Different from its predecessors, its enlarged fuel tanks were located in a different position. Thus, UH-1D had bigger internal space. The UH-1H was the last single-engine variant of Huey. It was equipped with a 1044 kW T53L13 turboshaft engine. Different versions of the UH-1 were produced by Germany, Italy, Japan and Taiwan under license. An interesting event happened in the late 1970s. After the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, the USA decided to embargo Turkey. This country found the solution in an agreement with Italy. Italy was producing a model of the UH-1 under license. So, Turkey started to produce under license of Italian model called the AB-205. Generally, the UH-1D model has a two-person crew consisting of a pilot and a co-pilot. However, depending on the mission requirements, the crew may also include door gunners. The helicopter can carry 14 troops or 1,760 kilograms of payload. The UH-1D is 17.4 meters long and 4.39 meters high. The width of the fuselage is 2.62 meters. The rotor diameter of the helicopter is 14.63 meters. The empty weight is 2,365 kilograms, while the maximum takeoff weight is 4,309 kilograms. Equipped with an 820 kilowatt Lycoming T53L11 turboshaft engine, the UH-1D has a top speed of 220 km per hour and a cruising speed of 205 km per hour. The range is 510 km. The service ceiling of the UH-1D is 5,910 meters. The helicopter can be equipped with machine guns as well as gun and rocket pods. There are also twin-engine UH-1 variants such as the UH-1N and UH-1Y. Besides, Bell has many different helicopters based on the Model 205 like the Bell 214 and Bell 412. If we talk about the war experiences of the UH-1, naturally, the first thing that comes to mind is the Vietnam War. During the Battle of Aya Drang in 1965, the new Halliburton 7th Regiment engaged in a battle for the first time. Many viewers will remember this battle from the movie We Were Soldiers. Although both sides claimed that they won the victory, it is sure that after the battle, the US Army seemed satisfied with the performance of the utility helicopters and success of the air mobility concept. In Vietnam, the UH-1 played a key role. During the war, the USA deployed over 7,000 Hueys in this country. More than 3,300 UH-1s were lost. At least one US Huey was shot down by a MiG-17 fighter. 
but most of these helicopters were shut down or destroyed by the ground fire. North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops were setting ambushes by hiding in caves and among trees along the flight routes of the UH-1s. The Huey's survivability was low against 12.7mm and 14.5mm machine guns. Similarly, the UH-1s, which had to slow down in the landing areas, were becoming easier targets. However, trying to reach the same combat zone by land causing more casualties and unacceptably increased reaction time. South Vietnam's UH-1 losses, which used helicopters less frequently than the US Army, were fairly low until 1972. By March of that year, only 142 of the 765 Hueys supplied by the USA were lost. However, 63 UH-1s of the South Vietnamese Army were shot down in the Battle of An Loc in April. In the same battle, 391 Hueys were also heavily damaged. In 1975, a more tragical scene took place when Saigon was taken over by North Vietnam. To save themselves and their families, South Vietnamese pilots took off from their bases and reached the US amphibious assault ships. For new helicopters to be able to land, once a Huey landed on the ship, it was then being pushed into the depth of the sea by its crew. Thus, during the frequent wind operation, around 70 UH-1s were sacrificed to save lives. Although not featured in Hollywood movies, Australia also got involved in the Vietnam War and lost 7 UH-1s throughout the war. After the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel began to acquire the UH-1s to replace its piston-engined S-55 and S-58s. During the War of Attrition, Israeli Hueys especially played an important role on the Jordanian front. Also, they were used frequently for medical evacuating missions during the 1973 Yom Kippur War also known as the October War. In this war, UH-1s saved nearly 900 wounded Israel soldiers' lives in return of five helicopters lost. During the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, 72 UH-1s played a key role in Turkish victory. In this war, which the Turks called the Cyprus Peace Operation, for the first time in history, a large-scale land-to-land overseas air mobility operation was carried out. 12 Turkish helicopters were damaged by the Greek Cypriot fire. An interesting fact is that, although France, the UK and the USA have carried out successful air mobility operations, they all lost the war in Algeria, Egypt and Vietnam respectively. Turkey is the first country which carried out a successful air mobility operation and won the war. Two of the nine UH-1s Argentina deployed on the Falklands Island after the invasion of 1982 were destroyed by the British. The remaining helicopters were captured intact. El Salvador and Lebanon used their UH-1s to drop freefall bombs in real combat, unlike their conventional mission definitions. It is reported that during the Iran-Iraq war, several Iranian Hueys were shot down by Iraqi Mi-25 helicopters. These were one of the first examples of the helicopter-to-helicopter -helicopter air combat. Of course, the combat experience of the UH-1s is not limited to these. Over the past 50 years, they have been involved in so many conflicts. With the experience gained in these battles, the UH-1 has paved the way for improving utility helicopters and air assault doctrine. Some examples can be given, like the development of more resistant rotors against high-caliber guns, armoring of critical areas of the helicopter, use of self-sealing fuel tanks, and support of utility helicopters with attack helicopters in air assault missions. But like all good things, the legend of the UH-1 has an end. This helicopter, which modern armies gradually retired, is still modernized and used by many countries. Yet, they are no longer generally preferred for frontline missions. Although this legendary helicopter will not have a place in the sky someday in the future, the UH-1 will always continue to fly in the hearts of all the aviation and war history enthusiasts. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel 
and give us a thumbs up if you like our video.